I think you'd all agree that our ears play a rather vital role in our day-to-day -day lives and we probably take them for granted. It's like with anything, if unless it's going wrong, you don't notice it. But with our ears, if things do start to go wrong, then sometimes that can be a little bit too late. So today I want to address ear care when swimming. We're going to be looking at how to prevent swimmer's ear and in the worst case scenario, if you do end up with symptoms, how best to treat them. Well, summer's ear is an infection of the outer ear, that area between your eardrum and the outside of your ear. And for those who want the sciencey name, it's known as otitis externa. Now, this is often brought on from when water gets into that area and it just starts to breed a moist environment, which bacteria can then be generated, which leads to an infection. Now, in most occasions, it is as a result of bacteria, but in rare occasions, it can actually be brought on from a virus or even from fungus. Now, swimmer's ear might sound a bit insignificant. I mean, we all get water in our ears from time to time, but unless you've experienced an ear infection, which I'm hoping you haven't, you won't know just how excruciating it is. And there's no surprises in the fact that it's called swimmer's ear, as obviously swimmers do spend more time with water in their ears and as a result, do tend to get more ear infections. But that isn't to say that it is purely ear infections that swimmers get, as actually other people can be susceptible to it and children are actually even more susceptible than adults. So if it's not from swimming, what else can give you swimmer's ear? Well, if you're an excessive sweater or you live in some really humid conditions, then that can again lead to that area in your ear canal just getting very moist and being that perfect breeding ground for bacteria. Now, it could make sense or to you seem logical that, well, if you keep the area clean, then surely that's going to reduce the chance of bacteria being able to build up there. Well, with our ears, that isn't necessarily true. So if you are someone who puts your fingers in your ears to try and clean them or uses cotton buds or anything else, well, you could be actually causing small scratches and abrasions inside of the ear canal, which in turn can lead to that bacteria being able to develop. And the same goes if you wear hearing aids or you use earplugs when you're swimming, all of which can upset that natural balance within your ear. So the best case scenario is to actually leave the inside of your ear alone as much as possible to prevent that bacteria having that breeding ground and leading to an infection. It's crazy when you start to think how sensitive our ears are and how many things can upset that balance. And it's amazing, we don't end up with more problems, but this is purely down to the fact that our body's amazing defense system basically sorts it out and why we are best to leave the inside of our ears alone as much as possible. So you've got a thin water repellent, slightly acidic film that lines the ear canal and discourages that bacteria growth. Now, did you know that earwax is an accumulation of this waxy film, dead skin cells and other debris that travels to the opening of the ear canal to actually keep it clean? Yes, earwax is not something to be rigorously removed unless it is excessive. And then the shape around our outer ear, particularly around the opening of the ear canal, that's all there to help prevent foreign bodies from entering. Thankfully, early stage ear infections are generally quite easy to spot and also respond really well to intervention. So the key is knowing what signs to look out for. And it's usually things like just having a slightly sensitive ear, maybe a bit of itching in the inside. It could be some redness showing, so you might need someone else to look for that. But just maybe touching or pulling around the ear area, if that feels uncomfortable, that is a sign and potentially a little bit of fluid coming out. Those are all mild signs, which hopefully if you catch them early enough, you can nip them in the bud. If it starts to get to that feeling of just being a little bit full or sort of heavy inside your ear, or potentially your hearing is starting to be slightly decreased, well, that is then the sign that it's moved on to a moderate ear infection. Now, hopefully you never experience a severe ear infection, but symptoms of that are just having a completely blocked ear canal, potentially severe pain in your face, around the ear area, so your neck and your head as well. And it can lead to swollen lymph nodes and in the end actually lead to a fever. But fingers crossed, you never get to that point. But wherever you are on that scale, if you have any of those discomforts or symptoms that we've mentioned, you are best going straight to speak to a doctor and trying to get it sorted as soon as possible before it does progress. 
suspect we've now gone into enough detail to make you want to care about this really precious piece of your anatomy. And as with anything, prevention is going to be better than cure. So I expect you're wondering how to make sure that you don't get an ear infection. Well, the obvious answer is going to be to keep your ears as dry as possible. Now, if you are a triathlete or a swimmer, that is not going to be possible all of the time. But also just getting in the shower, you're going to end up with water in your ears. But if you are a regular swimmer, then investing in some good earplugs or having a swimming cap that at least covers your ear will help to prevent so much water going in, but within reason, some will still go in there. And then it's gonna be a matter of trying to dry the area as effectively as possible, yet without putting anything inside your ear, for all of those reasons we talked about earlier. And this is where some people adapt different methods. And I personally, if I have water right in my ear, I do do that slightly funny head shake, and it's very relieving when you suddenly feel all of the water gush out. And I'm sure you've seen swimmers shaking their heads around doing that in the past. But then once you do that, you just want to try and dry the area around the outside of your ear without actually damaging and going inside, as tempting as it can be sometimes. And if you do a lot of swimming in the open water, you obviously want to check that that water doesn't have high levels of bacteria, not just for your ears, but your overall health. And then temperature can have another effect, but that's probably a video for another day. And that's where we start to look at something called surfer's ear. But as tempting as it is, you let your ears do the natural balancing act to prevent that bacteria themselves. Now, the skin inside of your ear is so sensitive, like we've talked about. So even things like hairspray can upset that balance, especially if you are susceptible to these sorts of problems. So maybe just putting some cotton wool on the outside of your ears before spraying your hair, for example. Things like that, which I hadn't thought about before researching this video. And now, obviously, a massive kind of caveat here, I am not an audiologist. I've just done some research and spoken to some audiologists, but there are certain over-the-counter eardrops that you can get which can potentially help dry out your ear or protect them, but I would not recommend going to get them unless you've spoken to a specialist who can really help to guide you on how best to look after your own ears, because like we said, they're pretty valuable. Now, unfortunately, for some reason, some people are more susceptible to ear infections than others. So wherever you are on that spectrum, you just want to make sure that you stay on top of symptoms as long-term issues can lead to hearing loss or even bone and cartilage damage. So I think I've done enough of scaremongering around this. Basically, make sure you look after your ears, but hopefully you can carry on swimming and enjoying whatever sports it is that you want to do. But if you guys want to share any of your experiences or any advice or things that you've learned along the way to protect your ears, do leave that in the comments section below. And if you've enjoyed this slightly different video, please give us a like.